Hey, good morning, fish heads, or good evening, good afternoon, good middle of the night, whenever it is that you guys are watching this video. It is tips and tricks time. I've already got the base coat and layers on this dirty gill that we're going to be spraying today. And today, I'm going to show you how I do some off-the-wall different style lines to achieve the same effect. And it's pretty cool. Pretty easy. You, anybody can do it. I'm going to be using this random card here that's got a rough cut in it. Uh, this is from an old art tools border that you just kind of pull off when you're popping those out of the stencil holder. And some everyday ordinary netting that you guys can pick up at Walmart, at the sewing area. Hopefully you guys have already got it. If you don't have it, you can use produce bags. There's a lot of different ways that you guys can get scaling. But I'm going to be using this particular netting. It's small, kind of looks like scales. We're just going to put this over our lure. Now this is the evergreen pressing, this replica, and love the one knocker in this. Um, I know Schultz has got it. I'm sure there's probably a couple of places here in the States that have it. So normally when I'm putting the netting on, at least what I do, is put on the bill and then I'll get a couple of alligator clips and hold that in place. And it can be all junked up. The whole purpose of this is to just keep this in place. And then I'll fold this over the tail eyelet. I'll try and find an alligator clip that's not quite as painted up. This one's got quite a bit of paint on it. So I've been, I, that's when I pull them out of the helping hands, like this one's getting ready to get replaced. Um, I'll. I'll use them again. I'll use them as many times as I can. So this paint is good and dry. It's been sitting here for a couple of days because I wanted to reserve this for tips and tricks time. And then what I'll do is I'll just pull fairly tight. You don't want to scratch this paint, but I'll pull fairly tight with my thumb, get it there, hold it in place, and then grab my alligator clips and put that on. And bring it all the way down making sure I got that tight now if you have a whole bunch of this excess just go ahead and take some scissors and snip that off you're usually going to be just doing a one use with this stuff anyways it's fairly thin and brittle and then just do the same thing pull that tight grab another clip and bunch it down and then once the clips in place come back and hold it and then do the same thing all the way back I've got everything clamped down and the reason that you want this fairly tight is that you don't want any paint to bleed up underneath the scale netting I've got some detail black magenta loaded in here and we're going to utilize this as our scales and it can it can go a little bit over but I've got my pressure down around 12 and we're just going to start and work towards us and work away from the paint so we're not going over the paint with this because that has a tendency to smear it. So this is Detail Black Magenta. And we're just going to make a couple of lines here. Just like we would on cross stencils. Now when we get into this gill area, and you can flip this up to work it to your advantage. If you can see your gill plate and you can see it well, try and run on both sides of that. Don't run over your gill plate because your gill plate is going to be stenciled in or, or shaded in once we're finished anyways. And what we're doing is we're just creating a, a little bit of a definition and it's just primarily going to be, and then we're going to come back and go the other way find an area that works so come back and do say that there's that just a new neat way to drop some lines on your bluegill pattern and then we're going to heat set this side so that this doesn't move before we do the other side. Now 
you can see where everything's in place. So if you want, grab your Sharpie and kind of place one dot down the back so that you can line up your gill lines, your stripes, to be in the same place on both sides. And then we can come back and cover that with a darker, like a moss green or a little bit more detailed black magenta. That way when you're working on this side, you'll have an idea of where to line your stencil up. And then we're just going to come back and do the same thing on the other side. Now we can pull this down and out of the way since we're in the helping hands holder at this point. Now I'm not sure how well you guys can see this offline, but I can see this dot perfectly and it's really helping me line up this stencil edge. And then just continue to wipe that down to make sure you don't have any excess It'll get on there and come back and just kind of lift that up a little bit and then run it on each side of your gill plate. Wipe that down, come back and go this way first. And now You've got some cool freehand lines that look good, they match up. And you can pull this netting off and I'll show you how it looks. There we go, fish heads. We have achieved some cool gill stripes on this. Now, how do we cover this? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy phrase of the day folks. Now we still have our detail black magenta in the chamber. So I'm going to come over and do this with this Anarchy Creature Feature. Very good at hiding those dots. You can even, if you want to kind of complete this, run a little bit along those edges. And we'll heat set that. And then while we're at it, we might as well go ahead and shade those gill plates. Got a little piece of stencil here. But you could, if you let's say you don't have stencil and you don't know how to cut stencil, you're not prominent at that yet. Because this particular one has a fairly straight gill plate, Just do one section at a time and do this other side here and that will give you your shading on that gill plate. Now I am going to come back and finish this up because it does have a couple other lines in it. go. Thanks very much for watching this morning. This has been your quick tip and trick. We'll have more throughout the week. You guys take care and have a great day. Happy casting from Jekyll Bates. Okay, okay. One more quick tip before we go. So if you're dealing with high humidity around your house or wherever it is that you guys are working, or you're worried that the paint might be a little bit tacky and you don't want to put your fingers on this, use these little alligator clips 
to help you make a little bit of a break in between your layer so that when you're putting the ear flaps on you're not touching directly onto the surface that you may have just painted. And there you go.